Welcome to another coding tutorial and in today's video, I'm going to show you how we can use the function text to points to create interesting typography. Text to points is a built-in function within P5.js that returns an array of points outlining the text written within the P5 font class. And it takes in a total of five arguments. The first one is the string of text that we want to write. The second and third are the X and Y location of the bottom left corner of where we want to locate the text. The fourth one is the font size. And then the fifth one is called the sample factor and simplify threshold, which we'll go into the details in a little bit. Before we can use this function, first we need to have the font that we want to use, and then we need to prep our sketch by preloading the font. To get the font that you want, maybe you already have it somewhere in your computer, but I found an easy way by going to fonts.google.com and then download the font that you want. Once you have that, you want to come to your sketch, click this arrow here, and then you're going to preload the font. To do that, you click this plus sign here and then click create folder. You want to name your folder, maybe fonts, and then you want to upload your file. And this is where you will drag and drop your font file in here. Once your font is downloaded, you want to write a function called preload. And this is the function where you will be preloading your font. First, I'm gonna create a new variable called font. And then we're gonna set the font within the preload function to another function called load font. And then inside this parentheses, you want to tell the computer where the font file is. For us, it is in the folder called fonts, and then the file name is called, for mine, it's called roboto-regular.ttf. You see that this ending is .ttf. It can be either .ttf, .otf. They're working the same way. So what you need to do is that you need to come here. Inside this parentheses, now you will tell the computer where that file is. So for my, it's in the folder called fonts, and then you want to do a backslash and then the name of your file. All right, so once you have this, just make sure that it works. I'm just gonna click play. Gives me no error. So. Now my font is preloaded. So now we can start using the function text to points. So I'm going to create a new array and I'm going to call it points. And then inside the setup function, I'm going to set points to our text to points function, right? To use this function, we're going to write the font variable here and then dot and then text to points. So as I said earlier, text to points takes in a total of five arguments, but actually only the first three are required. So the string text and then the X and Y location. So I'm going to give the text that I want to write. How about hello? And then we're going to give it at 0, 300. Before I draw it out, let's just print what points return. All right, so you can see here that it is a string of objects of the length 19, right? And then inside each of the object, it has three things, x, y, and alpha. x and y are the x and y coordinates of each of the points. And then this alpha is not the same thing as the alpha value in colors, but this is actually the path angle. So it says 90 here, but I'll show you how this works. So right now, let's just focus on x and y coordinates here. So for us to be able to bring out the x and y inside the draw function, I'm going to use a for loop and I'm going to loop through the points, the length of the points array, right? So points dot length. And then I'm going to draw an ellipse. Actually, I'm just going to draw a point using the point function and then the point function takes in the total of two arguments which are the x and y coordinates of that point so for us it's going to be points of i dot x and then points of i dot y okay it's here and you can't see anything you can't see the word because it's very small so what if we give it a size of 300? All right, so now we can see just the word he because it's too large. So I'm actually going to change from hello to the letter A. 
And instead of drawing points here, I'm going to draw an ellipse. And then I'm going to give it a size of 10. So if we look back at this object again, you can see that alpha is at 250, right? This is still 250, but then there are some that is 180, right? What is 180? 109? So I want to show you how the path angle works. So within here, what if we do if points of i dot alpha is equals to 180, then fill it red, else fill it white. What do you notice? 180 are all of these horizontal lines, right? So it is actually just the angle of the path of each of the points here that are being drawn. So that's how the angle path works. All right, let's comment this out. The second thing that I want to show you is let's change from the letter A to the letter H. Do you see that? Even though we put the X and Y coordinates of the bottom left corner at 0, 0,300, this is not at X equals to 0, right? It's slightly off this line here. But when we put A, it's here. Let's try a different letter. Let's do J. So as you can see, it really depends on the text that you write that indicates what is the x and y coordinate of the actual bottom left corner of that text. So you may need to play around with this point a little bit. All right, so I'm going to go back to A. And then another thing that I want to show you is that right now the size of the text is at 300, right? But if I were to use this new function, I'm going to set it to a variable. And this function is called text bound. And text bound is a function that returns the bounding box surrounding the string of text that you write within this P5 font class. So I'm going to write also the letter A, and then I'm going to give it the exact same X and Y coordinates and also the size. Let's just draw it first. Before we draw it, let's print it out so we know what this returns. So let's print box here. Oh, it's text bounds. All right, so what do you see here? It returns x, y, so the x and y coordinates of the bottom left corner, and then the height and the width. And do you notice something? We set the size to be 300, right? But then the bounding box is 213 and 187.6, right? So if we were to draw it out, so box.x, box.y, box.w and box.h, right? It covers our letter, but as you can see, the width and the height is not actually exactly the same as what the width and the height of 300 would be. So similar to the x and y coordinates, it really depends on the size of the text that you write. And I don't know if that depends on the font that we use or not, but as for my font right now, which is Ro Roboto-Regular, this is what it provides me. So I want you to keep that in mind that it's not super precise, so you might need to experiment a little bit. I'm going to move it actually to, how about a little bit at the center. So next, I want to talk about the last argument, which are the sample factor and the simplify threshold. So inside here, you put another comma. And in this argument, you need to put a curly bracket. And then inside a curly bracket, what you need to put is the word sample factor. So let's start with sample factor first. And then you need a colon. And then let's put 0 0.1. And you don't need a semicolon here. All right, once I click play, nothing changed, meaning that actually 0 0.1 is the default sample factor. But how about if we change it to 0 0.2? What do you see? You see more circles, right? And then how about 0 0.5? Even more circles. And then if we do 1. So sample factor is 
the resolution of your points. The higher the number, the more resolution it is. And then the second one is called simplify threshold. And let's set it to zero first. And you need a comma here. So zero is also the default value. So that's why when I click play, nothing happens. But what if I change it to one? You see that a lot of the points are gone, right? If you go back and look at the documentation, simplify threshold removes collinear points if it's set to a number other than zero. So it removes points that are on the same line or collinear, right? And the value represents a threshold angle to use when determining whether two edges are collinear. So from zero to let's say zero point, let's do 0 0.0001, right? And then if you continue to increase, then more and more points are deleted. And if you do one, so I think this last argument here, the sample factor and the simplify threshold, you can play around to see what is your desired look. Before I end this video, I want to show you one quick interesting application that we can do by using text to points. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna move these points around in an oscillating motion to create a kinetic typography. And we can do that simply by using either the sine or the cosine function. And we're gonna add it inside the X coordinate of each of these circles here. So inside here, we're going to add r times sine of angle. And then we're going to increment the angle by, let's do by 1. And we're going to also declare r, let's set r to 5, and then angle, let's start angle at 0. Just try this. All right, and I have already set the angle mode to degrees here. But because I set the increment to be one, it seems like it's moving very slow. So let's add 10. All right, so it's moving back and forth quicker now. But as you can see here, it's moving all at the same time. And that's not that interesting. So we can change the beginning of each of these points to be at a different location. So inside here, what if we add angle plus, let's do i times 10, how about that? So if we don't move it yet, you can see that the points are not at the exact A shape that we had initially, it's a little bit offset. So let's move it. All right, so that gives it a more of a wavy feelings and we can, play around with, you know, the radius here. If we do 15, that means it's moving at a bigger amplitude, right? And we can also change this factor here. What if we do it just by one? So it seems like it's moving together. And if we increase this, let's do five. All right, let's do 15. How about 25? Nice. I'm planning to make a lot more of these kinetic typography tutorials. And if that is something that sounds interesting to you, please give this video a like or comment down below of what kind of kinetic typography that you want to see. Give this a try.